Hey, what's up, me waters? Welcome back to our discussion about cheap paleo, part two. So today's video is all about um, how to get the best quality meat for the cheapest price. Um, so before we dive into this, just wanted to review again um, the quality of meat that you're getting. We want to be cost effective, but we don't want to compromise the quality of meat that we're getting. Um, so everything in this list below that's highlighted in green is your best bet. So if you can get pasture raised, grass fed, or organic meat, that is your best bet. Go for it if it's within your budget. Um, however, we can still uh, get relatively inexpensive meat that's good quality and what we've got highlighted in yellow. Uh, and, and you can see this and pick this out at the supermarket. Uh, so just be sure that at least your meat has no added hormones and is vegetarian fed. And if you're buying chicken, do your best to make sure that those animals are at least cage free and free range because they're going to have the best nutrients and omega 3s. Alright, so back to getting meat for a good cost. The first, the first tip to follow is buy bone-in meat. So buy shanks, buy soup bones, um, buy shoulder roast, anything with like the bone in it tends to be cheaper than boneless cuts like steaks and chicken breasts. So speaking of chicken, a great cost-effective way to go is to buy the whole chicken. Not only will this last you four to five meals, if you're a single person, but you can use that leftover carcass to make broth, um, and the leftovers will last you quite a long time. Third tip is to buy in bulk. So whenever possible, um, stock up on meat when you see it at a good price. You can always put the remainder in the freezer. So a good thing, uh, a, a good thing to, to look for when you're buying in bulk um, it's for specials in the supermarket, or if you are able to do this, to buy a whole side of beef from a farm. We've got a resource below for an example of a farm that will sell you and ship you a whole side of beef. Now beware, this does require you to have a bit extra room in your freezer, but this is always an option and will definitely cut your costs of buying meat. So again, be on the lookout for manager specials in the supermarket. If you see these, buy it, stick it in the freezer. That meat is still good, and you can always cook it at a later date. If we're on a budget, forget about the steaks, forget about the tenderloins. These tend to be a lot more expensive than those bone-in meats. Another tip is try organ meats. I, I know these are not uh, typically what we like, to taste and eat, but since modern America doesn't really eat these anymore, they're often available at a much cheaper cost. Uh, so be adventurous. And then lastly, I know we mentioned this before, but freeze your extra meat, especially when you're buying in bulk and especially when you're getting discounted prices. So things to avoid, your sirloins, your porterhouses, your New York strips, Steaks in general cost a lot of money and probably not going to fit you on your budget. Bacon and deli cuts are another thing to avoid because those things, um, due to the smoking process um, and, and preserving process, tend to cost more for the, the whole quantity that you're getting in terms of pounds, in terms of protein. So I would skip these um, and opt for, for the whole chicken or different cuts. As well, fancy sausage also tends to cost quite a bit of money, up to you know, ten or fifteen dollars for a good, uh, you know, pound or pound and a half of sausage. Try the try the chicken sausage in the store if it's a good price and if it's humanely raised. But overall, I would avoid this as well. And most importantly, avoid the cheap stuff. Don't buy the spam. Don't buy the factory feedlot meat. It's not good for you. All right, well, that's it. We'll see you next time.